Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a used Pentium E5200 socket 775 CPU. It cost me £1.50, roughly $2. This is a GTX 1060, it cost me £190 new and is widely available for around the 200 price point both here and in the States. This GPU cost 100 times more than the processor and today we're going to be pairing these together. Why, you may ask? Well, aside from the fact that I thought it might be fun, if you plan on upgrading an older PC, a lot of the time the graphics card is the top priority, but today we're hoping to highlight the effects this can have in terms of bottlenecking if you go all out on a GPU but leave the rest of your system behind, something I've seen and read about all too often. Will we still see respectable results, or will this mismatch leave our whole system struggling? Let's find out. So the Pentium E5200, a CPU I actually used to own, is a dual core processor that released in 2008. We could have picked worse to be honest, we thought about a Pentium 4, but you would have seen single digit frame rates all the way through, and it wouldn't have been very easy on the eyes. This will hopefully be a little better, well to be honest I know it will be a little better, and I feel it best represents an average older system. It's got two cores and nothing fancy like hyper-threading or integrated graphics, but it was recognised as a decent but cheap overclocker. So we set ours at 3GHz to give it a better chance, but I've got to be honest, this didn't really make much of a difference in games, as to sort of be expected. The GTX 1060 is a modern mid-range card. It was released in August of last year and this specific model features 1152 CUDA cores, a 1506 MHz base clock and an 8 GHz memory clock. The prices of both components will vary depending on where you live but the E5200 and other Socket 775 processors that are used seem to be selling dirt cheap on places like eBay. So let's see how this setup runs. We're using Shadowplay to record as it causes very little to no performance issues. I'll also be displaying the result of each game with my i5-4460 as well to give you an idea and a comparison, but we won't be mentioning those results until the end to focus more on the older E5200. Dirt Rally at first and we cranked everything up to 1080p with the Ultra settings preset. This was a very good start and our system managed 37 frames per second on average over the course of 5 races with different weather conditions and number of opponents. A very good start and it looks like our 8 year old chip is holding its own so far. Crisis 3 up next and we've stuck to 1080p resolution but this time set the game to the medium preset. It looks a little better than low and runs very similar. The game hovers around 30 frames per second but often at times became quite stuttery. The footage you see here was the smoothest clip and getting into a gunfight saw significant drops even at lower resolutions. I should also mention that the CPU is running at 100% usage pretty much all of the time as expected. So we tried out No Man's Sky next, a game I haven't tested out in a while, but it now runs pretty well after a few updates, and here on our Pentium E5200 and 1060 system, we're seeing an average of 34 FPS with everything on low or off, except high textures. Walking around keeps things smooth, but activating the jetpack does cause a few drops here and there, Nothing that matters too much in a game about exploration, but it's nice to see, despite the huge bottleneck, that this game, like the others, runs okay. GTA 5 now, because what benchmark test is complete without it? And with everything on normal settings with advanced options off, we saw about 25 FPS overall. Now GTA is quite CPU dependent, and that's definitely made apparent here. The game also stutters quite a bit, which is the case unfortunately, with a lot of older dual core CPUs anyway, and nothing really improves when we go out into the desert with less going on. It's a shame because we were on such a good run, but let's move on to our final test. So we tested something a little less demanding, Rocket League, for our last test, which ran perfectly at anywhere from 60 to 80 frames per second, 70 being the average here even at the highest settings. There was no sign of lag or slowdown and if you bought a new GPU, like the GTX 1060, before you had a chance to upgrade anything else, you would still be having an okay time with a lot of games. 
I should say that Battlefield 1 and Witcher 3 were also tested, but they weren't playable at all unfortunately, even with the settings and resolutions turned way down. When we consider how our i5 compared next to the E5200, the difference is definitely huge, and I hope this video sort of enhances the importance of having a well balanced system. Having said that, if you are in the middle of upgrading and the GPU happens to arrive in the post first, don't hesitate to stick it in your system for the time being, because you may just be surprised by what you see. I know I certainly was here. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a comment down below, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it so much, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and as always, I hope to see you all in the next one.